All right, so uh, this will be up in just a second. But what I, what I wanted to talk about is just a little bit of where uh, we've gone in the U.S. with, uh, with our history and the net roots. And uh, hopefully that may, you know, be able to provide a few lessons for, you know, your development over here um, to learn from some of our successes and also some of our mistakes. Um, so I, I think there's roughly uh, three phases that you could kind of break things into in terms of our development. Um, the first being uh, around 2002 to 2006 when we were really establishing our power and we were largely in a defensive posture um, with the Bush administration being in power. Um, secondly, there was a period from uh, 06 to 08, which really there was a lot of institutions that came online um, to really provide some of this infrastructure that Sonny was referring to. Uh, and then there's the period that's sort of 2009 to present, which I call struggling with governance, because uh, that's been you know, in Obama's term and trying to figure out how we can actually leverage the power we have to get the policies that we want to see in place. Um, so this first phase, uh, was really kind of when things started online for us. There were a few institutions that were around previous to this, but not too many. Um, the landscape that we had here was, you know, you had the Bush presidency going on. Um, it was an extremely conservative government uh, doing a lot of things that uh, really angered um, left-wing activists in the U.S. Uh, there really were no left-wing voices in the media. It was, you know, there were people that would say that they were liberal or whatnot, but um, they were uh, pretty centrist. And blogs largely started not as some exercise to, you know, have a grand political theory on how to change things or uh, to make money or to have a career. It was really just out of anger and frustration, you know, to criticize the media, to criticize the government. And they kind of grew from there and attracted people because that was not something that was being offered to them anywhere else. Um, there was a, a guy by the name of Peter Dow that... Uh, worked on the Kerry campaign in 2004, uh, and early on he, he created this uh, theory, which is which is worth reading, reading, and I won't go into it in great detail. Uh, but if you go to techpresident.com, you can find his original essay. Um, he was really trying to take on the question of how uh, can we determine if blogs have influence, or how do we develop that they have influence, and what he really developed. And this the the right side of this really refers to uh, this piece of infrastructure that Sonny was referring to, the conservative message machine, which was working really well at the time. Um, you had the Republican Party, the corporate media, right-wing bloggers, all kind of working in, a, in an echo chamber fashion to really get their narratives across, and they always stuck, and they always would get out there. We were not really so successful uh, with that early on, but kind of the, the, the critical piece of his theory that, that he put out there that made people think a little differently about their work was that to have influence, you know, there has to be a relationship between the party, uh, between bloggers, and between the media. And if those sides of the triangle are not functioning and feeding off of one another, then no real influence can be had. And so that doesn't mean you need to be co-opted by any of those, uh, you know, outlets, but you have to have clout, you have to have people reading, you have to have people looking for stories um, in those. And so this was an early um, thing that was really important for us to develop our influence in the U.S. Um, where this one fight that this played out in very early, which may be similar to some of the things you're facing uh, today, is one of the things that uh, Bush was trying to do during his term was privatize Social Security and let it be traded openly uh, on Wall Street um, and make all of his friends there a lot of money. Um, this is something that, you know, by all rights, he should have been able to do. He had the presidency, he had Congress, he had the Senate. Um, he had been successful at doing pretty much everything else that he wanted to do. But what blogs were able to do and to change the situation was just make a whole lot of noise about this story and get facts out there that were not being covered. Um, eventually, the media picked up on it people started learning what was actually happening, and then Congress started feeling a lot of pressure, and, you know, this is kind of a short version of it, but basically we stopped it from happening. Um, and we gave those on our side and the Democratic Party the courage to actually stand up against it, whereas before they probably would have let, you know, Bush roll through and do what he wanted to do because they had no support. So that was an important lesson, and we had several other uh, defensive battles that we fought during this time. 
um, but this is a good example of the kind of thing that's possible when you work together to push out a message. So in the second phase was when a lot of uh, institutions came online. And just to kind of give you an idea of what some of those are, um, that you can you know, look up and kind of you know, get an idea of, is there something equivalent here that could be supported, could be formed? One key thing for us, and this may not be as relevant for you, it may be, but uh, is Act Blue, which allowed us to raise money for candidates in a very easy and transparent way um, you know, across jurisdictions. So me as someone living in California could give to a candidate that was in, say, Ohio, whereas that would not be necessarily easy with you know, the legal restrictions in place previously. And this is something that lent itself very easily to blogs because they could simply say, this candidate is someone that you, know, you should be supporting, and it allowed us to effectively nationalize races, whereas before, congressional races were very local and they had mostly local money, but for the first time, bloggers were able to nationalize races. So the impact of that, this tool being in place, is since 2004, we've raised close to $261 million online directly to candidates, mostly in small dollar den uh, denominations. Um, another key thing to have is research and communications capacity. And so some of the organizations that are fulfilling that uh, purpose right now are organizations like Think Progress, which I believe is similar to uh, Left Foot Forward for you guys. Uh, media Matters, which is strictly a media watchdog uh, kind of thing. They study all the right-wing radio and print and television and just basically report on it. And then we do, developed a lot of listservs to communicate amongst each other. So you would have bloggers and influential people at organizations just trading information on listservs, and that would allow us to kind of get on message for you know, what was going on, what fights were important, you know, how people were responding to them. Um, online campaigning was very important. So Move On was, of course, one of the earliest organizations to be doing this, but now you have groups like PCCC, um, Color of Change, and there's a family of organizations there. Uh, even Change.org is kind of in this role. And then infrastructure building is kind of the final uh, key component, which we play a role as Network Station doing that. Um, New Organizing Institute uh, trains people in kind of campaign skills, uh, and they do boot camps, things like that. And then Democracy for America, which um, is what's left over from Howard Dean's presidential campaign, does that same kind of thing with uh, electoral skills. So actually doing field work and things like that. Um, some of the trends that you know, we developed during this time is there was a professionalization of the Netroots. So it became something that was less a passion and became more of a job. So people started earning money from advertising. People started being funded by organizations, whether that's you know, groups like labor or whatnot. Um, Networks activists started moving into party organizations. And so they were still pretty low in the hierarchy, but it allowed us to have uh, someone that was a friendly voice in, say, a party committee or inside of a senator's office or a representative's office that, again, allowed us to kind of increase our clout over time. Um, there was a mastering of online campaigning uh, tactics, which has really been refined year over year, but also integration of offline stuff because it's important to run an integrated campaign. You can't just do something that's online only. Ultimately, it has to translate to people making calls, uh, people opening their wallets, people knocking on doors, things like that, uh, turning out at a rally. Um, as I mentioned, increased political, political clout, and then better access to technology. It was really hard early on to get just a blog up and going. I mean, there was not nice software like WordPress or something that's out there now. I mean, a lot of people had to you know, code something up, but there's been you know, really easy to access blogging software. There's really easy to access email and petition software. Um, there's really easy to access donation software. So that's been something that's really helped our development as well. And then, you know, in this present period, um, we had, it, I guess what, what's important to talk about here, there's a lot of ways that could go uh, in this discussion, but what I want to talk about right now is what's possible if you have this infrastructure and you have this coordination um, that's working well together. And so there's just a couple of you know, notable successes that I want to mention, you know, the first of which is probably what's been the most successful thing for anyone in the U.S. of, of late has been on the LGBT rights front. 
Um, that movement has been incredibly coordinated and disciplined, and you've had radical activists, more mainstream activists, you've had organizations, you've had donors, you've had the legal class, all kind of working together and realizing that um, they need to necessarily have different stances and different tactics, but they're on the same side, they're working towards the same goals, and you know, the more mainstream activists are not gonna get angry that the more radical activists are getting locked up at the White House. They realize that's part of the fight and they're gonna support them in doing that. And so that's led to, you know, us being able to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It's led to a historic statement from our president um, on marriage equality uh, and a lot of other things. Um, the protecting the internet piece, stopping the SOPA and PIPA bills uh, to was, was an interesting thing because it, it got the left and the right working together and it also got um, tech activists that really aren't that involved in politics working together. And of course it, it got international attention because the Googles and Facebooks of the world took notice and Wikipedia blacked out their page. But real, the real story was that a lot of activists were woken up to these dangers and you know, the, the fact that um, the internet is threatened from time to time uh, and we're able to come together and fight that off. And then two things that are very good uh, for blogs to do and don't require near as much coordination, one is media accountability. Um, I'm not sure if that's as much of an issue um, as it is on our side, but we were able to, through a long campaign and a lot of coordination with some organizations, remove two really toxic media personalities from the air by pressuring their advertisers. And that just required a lot of research, a lot of continual bombarding of these advertisers um, to eventually get them to drop the shows and eventually the pressure of the money over time um, got them off the air. And the last thing is a, you know, a transparency campaign. So Alec Exposed is a project that's happened more recently. Um, Alec is this group funded by corporations that creates model legislation that ends up getting passed around the country but it's really awful and conservative and it's the worst stuff you'll find on like immigration and you know removing voting rights and things like that. But things like that operate in the shadows and that's their strength and so what bloggers are able to do is really just bring that to light and then it became eventually media stories that were in you know mainstream papers. So those things wouldn't be possible if it was just one or two individuals doing it and it wouldn't be possible even if it was just a group blog doing it. It really requires people to coordinate um, to a high degree with each other to have these kind of successes. So just in closing, I mean, I'll just say, think about how this applies to your work. Go to the sessions that are you know, at the rest of the convention today and think about how you can learn something new, but who in the room can you start coordinating with uh, to be more effective in what you're trying to do. So thank you very much.